The three most common use cases for remote care at Michigan Ear are patients that live further away, so patients that live an hour plus away, patients that live very close but are working professionals, and patients that have difficulty getting to the clinic, whether that is due to transportation or other health needs. That has not changed over time, but I do think we underestimated the number of patients that embraced remote care simply because of the working professional aspect. I have patients that I can see over their lunch hour. I have patients that I can see in between meetings that might only be a couple minutes down the road, but they're not taking an afternoon off work. They're not taking several hours away from the office because remote care is so very easy to implement. So when it comes to the two remote care tools, I think it's important for clinicians to remember that they actually complement one another. So in our clinic, we absolutely see the benefit of remote check as the check-in. That is our way to check in with our patients. Let's say you don't see a red flag. It's green, that patient's great. So either you're scheduling their next consult, their next remote check, um, or you're telling them to follow up with you when they have an issue. Truly beneficial to be able to check in with your patients to see if there's an initial problem. Let's say you do see a red flag in your remote check. Now, if that patient is interested and willing to participate in telemedicine, perhaps remote assist is a way that you can prevent them from having a clinic visit, make adjustments to their program, and again, get to that green check and that patient will then follow up as needed. So these two tools, which are distinct, they complement one another. I would say our three most common uses for remote care in our clinic are currently troubleshooting minor issues, um, checking data logging to help patients and families know where they're at in their process with their implant, and then serving patients who really have strong travel limitations. When it comes to remote check for adults, we use it for annual reviews, the six month review in the acute phase, um, to follow up for upgrade fittings and as a troubleshooting option. And then for the pediatrics, it's more for the adolescents. We use it for exactly the same as we do for the adults, but we're finding that the adolescents and the teens are much better at giving us information via the messaging service of remote check rather than verbally in person in appointments. With remote assist, that's something we, we've only just started using. It's very much a tool that we recognise can be very effective as a video call option. So we have trialled it as a means to help with um, auditory rehab in the acute care series. And also when there's certain troubleshooting topics may come up we may try remote assist. I recommend using remote care for the paediatric populations. I think for us, particularly for the adolescents, um, but it's also a really nice way for, we've got a few um, paediatric patients or adolescents that with other challenges and disabilities as well. So it can be really nice for the parents to be able to connect with us using the remote assist or they can help the child to do the remote check. One interesting case where remote check was very helpful to our clinic was a patient who was having some really unique device concerns and some error patterns on their sound processors and we had spent a lot of in-person time and the family traveling back and forth to figure out what was going on and we were able to implement a series of remote checks and use you know the impedances as well as the daily data logging to identify some patterns in when those difficulties were occurring and help get to the bottom of, of really what the problem was. One interesting case that we had was a patient with many ears disease who had wildly fluctuating impedances. We wanted to keep an eye on him, so we sent him remote checks every week to track how that was going. And that was quite a neat way of being able to do that without him having to travel to clinic all the time. A less common scenario where I've used remote care is for when one of my recipients was overseas. Um, they had some troubleshooting issues that they needed attending to and they couldn't quite find a clinic locally. So we were able to remote in and provide some assistance and hopefully they enjoyed the rest of their holidays.